Hey friends, welcome back to the channel, man. As always, I'm stoked to see you. So in this video, I have six tips for you if you're getting ready to attend any assessment and selection in the military and you're concerned about land navigation. Man, as always, I am super stoked and I'm pumped up to see you. So I had a lot, I've had a lot of comments uh, talking to me and ask me, hey Stoke, man, I'm getting ready to go to assessment selection. What are some tips that you can give me about land navigation? Because the truth is, man, hundreds of people go to a variety of assessment selections throughout the military. And the number one discriminator in every single one, I don't care if we're talking about just something as simple as an EIB or an ESB, or if you want to go to the STAR course, which is where I'm going to come in at you today, and of course this is going to apply to everything. The number one discriminator is land navigation. Land navigation. So in this video I am, I'm going to give you uh, six tips, some big things that I can put in your kit bag to remember when you're getting ready to go and you're getting ready to step out. Now in this video I'm not going to teach you how to plot a point. I'm not gonna teach you how to read a map. I'm not gonna teach you how to use a compass. If you need any of these things or anything else as it relates to some basic skill level 10 tasks, if you will, then check out my land navigation playlist and you'll find everything that you're looking for to be able to peel back the onion and master your craft. Right, rather in this one, I wanna give you some, some things you can put in your kit bag that will help make sure that you set yourself up for success. Now coming at you with number one, and before we do the number one tip, let's get a quick shout out from our sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a little bit of fun. All right, so the first pro tip that I can tell you, and this will save your butt every single time, because it's always the time when you don't do this, that's when it gets you, man. When you don't do what I'm about to tell you, that's when Murphy will sneak right on up and rip off your head and destroy your day, man. Morale killer. You need to secure everything to your person. Everything to your person. What do I mean when I say everything? I, I, I mean quite ev everything. Definitely every piece of sensitive items that you have needs to be dummy corded to your person. Your compass needs to be dummy corded to your gear. Your pen and your pencil need to be dummy corded to your notepad. Your protractor, need, need, you, you don't lose anything. Don't lose anything, right? Friends, I'm telling you, the last thing that you want is to, is to be moving out and then all of a sudden drop something and you're off and you've done moved four or five hundred meters from your last point and you don't have time to turn around and to find your compass. You don't have time to do it. So on that note, this is kind of pro tip one point B. Remember this, man. Remember this. Two is one and one is none. If you can have some multiple things in your kit bag, make sure you do that. More than one pen, more than one pencil, more than one notepad, more than one protractor. Have a couple compasses, man, it's all good. Right, so the next thing I wanna leave you with is don't plot 10 digit grid coordinates, man. Don't do it, you're wasting your time. Plot eight digit grid coordinates, man. It's gonna get you way close enough and the truth be told, that pencil mark that you're putting on your map is bigger than a 10 digit grid coordinate. So just don't fret, don't worry about th those 10 digits, okay? All right, and so moving on from pro tip number two into pro tip number three is make sure that you double check all of your work before you start heading out. The old adage is true, man. Measure twice and cut once. Plot your points twice. Check your distance twice. Check your azimuths twice. Preset your compass twice. Man, know, know how to do these things. Know how to do them. 
And so the next two tips I'm going to put in your kit bag is going to deal with how you actually, you know, you're moving around and how you're plotting your points. So first up is as you're plotting your points, don't try to move more than a few hundred meters at any given point in time. Each leg should only be a few hundred meters. So if you see that you have to move a thousand meters or more, then you need to use some attack points, right? You need, you need to set up some points along the way that will help make sure that you're moving in the right direction. Don't try to shoot and maintain an azimuth for a thousand meters, man. You can't do it. Rather, find a fixed point that's near the point where you're looking for and shoot an azimuth from that. That's called an attack point. And that'll help shoot you down a lot closer because maybe you can get to that intersection. Maybe it's a, a bend in the river. Maybe it's a, a known point on a tra power transmission line, some kind of linear uh, feature. And it has another uh, point that's crossing it and you can shoot from there out to your point. Do that, man, and it will save you heartache, it will save you time, and it will put confidence back in your kit bag. Right, the next tip is to make sure that as you are doing all of this, and you're starting to move out, man, use the terrain that you have around you, whether it's man-made features or natural, use them to help make sure and keep you on the right path. This is called using a handrail. Now what you don't wanna get caught doing is walking right on a handrail or walking right next to a handrail. You need to be off of it, but use the handrail. Know that if I, if I keep moving left, if I keep leaning left, I'm gonna hit that road, I'm gonna hit that stream, I'm gonna hit that trail that's on the map. But I can do that to such a degree that it will just help keep me moving in the right path. And listen to me, friends. You can do that. I promise you. But again, don't get caught walking on a handrail or like, you know, a couple arms lengths from a handrail. You need to be, you know, if, if I was on the road right here, I would want to be off beyond that tree line moving in the direction that I was trying to go, whether it was this way or this way. That way it didn't look like I'm using the handrail as a handrail. Does that make sense, friends? Does that make sense? Do that, because that's, that's a pro tip right there. I do have a final point for you, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw in some extra goodies in your kit bag, right? At, when you plot your points and you get there, and you drop your pack or whatever, and you're looking around, and you're scouring about, what I need you to know is that the points are there. They're not cheating you, they're, they're, not, they're not playing games with you. The points are actually, they're really there. It may mean uh, that, that if you have a, in a floodplain, that, that there's water and your point is, is actually down there in the water. That's happened before, friends. But I can promise you, your points are there. So if you get somewhere and you can't find your point, it's not, it's not right Man, I, I, just, I just came out my distance in my direction, and my point is not right here. What I need you to do is mark your spot. Maybe it's using a, a PT belt. Maybe it's taking off your pack and marking your spot. And from here, I, I, I need you to stop, and I need you to take a second, and I need you to look about. Listen. Look around you. Do you see anything? Maybe it's a, a trail where somebody was walking and it was obvious that they were walking to a point. That, that could be a clue. If you don't see anything after looking around, then walk out five meters and do a circle. If you don't see anything, move out another five meters and do a circle. Move out another five meters and do a circle. Each step along the way, being observant to everything that you're seeing and knowing where you, can, where you need to move back to, right? You could use a box method as well. Plenty of ways to do it. But just know that the points are there, friends. Know that the points are there. All right, so some other things I need you to put in your kit bag and to know and to remember is A, you know, if you're dealing with something that, that is a go or no-go as far as time is concerned, then always make sure 
that you're managing your time so that you can get back to your finish point before the time stops. Better to have three points and be an overall go and have missed a point than to have make it to all four points and bust time and bust your time suspense, right? So, so don't do that. Make sure that you know your pace count well. Now, up your, to know your pace count well, it doesn't just mean to be able to walk out 100 meters and back and know what your pace count is on, on this kind of terrain. What's your pace count at night? What's your pace count moving up a hill? What's your pace count moving back down a hill? What's your pace count with a pack on? How long, what is the time frame that it takes you to move a thousand meters at your pace count with stops along the way? How long does that take you? Be in tune with how you move. Be in tune and know what it feels like. Know what it feels like. Right, take a minute before you plot your points and you start, or after you plot your points and, and before you begin to move and look at, the, to look at the map, read it. What are the natural and the man-made features that you're going to see along the way? Maybe it's a hill, maybe it's a spur. Maybe it's a cut. Maybe it's a fill. Maybe it's a stream. Maybe it's a road. Know these things and plan it out in your head, right? Plan it out in your head. You're doing a mini rehearsal of your route before you step out so that you'll know what to expect. You, you, you plotted your course. You have your distance and your direction. And you know that you know, in 200 meters that you should begin to see some elevation change moving up in a hill off in this direction. So as you're moving, you count it out 100 meters. And another 45 seconds after that, you're at about 200 meters and you don't begin to see some elevation change. And another minute goes on and you still don't see some elevation changing. And another minute goes on and you still don't see some elevation. You need to stop, my friends, because something is wrong. You're probably moving in the wrong direction, right? And double check your work. Again, and that's why you double check and measure twice and cut once before you start moving out, right? I mean, come on now, right? So that's why, friends, you know, before you start getting out there, you need to, you need to do some land nav. You need to do some rehearsals where you're at right now. I don't care what the terrain is like. I don't care if you have a lot of roads, if you have a training area, if you have some rural areas, you need to get out and you need to go practice. Daytime and nighttime. You need to be proficient. You need to give some classes on this stuff because when you start teaching, it starts, it starts sinking things back in, right? As, you, as you're regurgitating it out and telling somebody else on how to do things, it really will start to let it sink in and marinate deep down inside you. All right, friends, so there you go. So just a few tips for you to put in your kit bag if you're getting ready to head off to an assessment selection. Maybe it is the STAR course. Maybe it is, you, you know, you're just getting ready to go to a leadership development course. Maybe you're getting ready to, to do some EIB work, ESB work, and you want some you want some, some, some real nuggets, man. You know how to do some basic things, but you need to, some real world experience, some real life experience on some things that you can put in your kit bag to help make sure that you get through that evaluation. If you enjoyed the content of the video, make sure you smash that like button. Leave some comments down below and let me know if, if what we talked about here, it, it was some good food for thought, some good things that you're going to keep inside your kit bag. Until then, my friends, y'all, you stay out there and you stay stoked.